thank you for joining us for our first segment of Down the Rabbit Hole. We're going to talk about bubblegum covers tonight. And uh, before we get started, let's just everybody go around and say hello. Hi, I'm Aaron. You can also catch me on Comic Book Food Chain and then sometimes on It's Drunken Chat. Steve from My Garden Comics. Sometimes you can catch me on this show or the Top Ten or the Star Wars show. Hey, this is Phil with Vintage Comics and Toys. What's up, everybody? This is Tony from Blue Green Artifacts. You can catch me on Instagram. Uh, Rich Taylor, a.k.a. Dollar. Follow me on IG underscore D as in dollar, dollar. O, the number one, L-A-R underscore. Nice seeing you. Hi, I'm Samson, uh, Comic Book Journey. Hi, I'm Joe, Red Hood Comic, and you, you can catch me outside. <laughs> <laughs> and who's the man who introduces us to this madness? All right. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Listen, anybody who follows me knows that I've got a thing for bubblegum covers. And we're going to get right into the presentation tonight. So this is Down the Rabbit Hole. This is our bubblegum cover edition. Uh, so the I'll first you slide, you know, people say to me, bubblegum covers aren't a thing, right? And I say, you know what? I think that's bullshit. This is uh, a cover of Los Angeles Magazine from March. And uh, here's Gavin Newsom blowing a bubble right on the cover. You know, you see people blowing bubble gums on the back of phones. You know, they, you have historical figures doing this. I, I really think that this idea of blowing bubbles is uniquely American and something that we're starting to see sort of spread throughout our culture. And uh, we're going to dig a little deeper. This next slide is, is by one of maybe the biggest artists in the game, uh, an artist by the name of Steam Horn. Um, this is his bubblegum portrait. Um, he's a modern artist who focuses on realism. And, uh, and you know, if he's involved in bubblegum, you know you know it's a big thing. You know, once I, I saw him on a podcast one time, and he's like, I am not an artist. I don't draw. And then, bam, he made our list. Okay. Who did <laughs> I've, got to, um, I've got to say something. I know you guys don't know, but I know it's kind of like Banksy. But I'm Steve Horn. I'm going to reveal it right now. You did the coloring. Um, you did the coloring. Yeah, I did a little bit of mixed media here. Use some pencil. Use some marker. Okay. okay. Um, I, can, I can see that. I just see the trend is, you know, you have Department of, of Truth with the lady in red with the eyes that are X'd out. You've got something is killing the children with the Erica Slaughter. She's wearing that scarf covering her neck. And now, in a week or two, I think you'll see Basilix, and uh, that lady has uh, a blue thing covering her her eyes and part of her face. So, is, it, is this sketch going to go on eBay? Uh, after I get it pressed, yes. Okay. Um, and graded. And, yeah. I mean, <laughs> because, uh, I can print too, isn't it? I'm available for retailer exclusive variants. Is this a, is this a correction? Is this a correction of Aaron's earlier? He tried to fix your art, so you went back and fixed his. I mean, it. You know. That's right. I really wouldn't. I I would not appreciate it if, if someone were to fix this, I, I would not be as uh, kind as, as JSC was. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Don't, you. you don't mess with perfection. It's a, <laughs> it's a one of one. <laughs> all right. All right. Let, let, all right let's go on with the show. Okay. When it comes to big modern bubblegum covers, Ms. Marvel number two is the book. Um, this is a, a Jorge Molina 1 in 50 variant. This book goes for two grand in nine eight. Goes for over five hundred bucks raw. This, as we speak, is the king of bubblegum covers, and frankly, the book that really got me thinking about this as a niche in the hobby. Anybody got any thoughts on this book? Oh, this book is awesome, man. This book yeah. is awesome. I mean, yeah, I mean uh, it, it is a ghost. It's a modern ghost. You, you, you'd be hard pressed to come by this. People are starting to pay premiums for the graphic novel with this with this image on it because it's so hard to come by. I, I just wish yeah. I knew then what I knew now because I'm pretty sure I had one of these like five years ago when it came out, and uh, 
Yeah, I wish I didn't. I still had it. All right, so on to the next one. So if you like this Marvel um, and you like bubblegum covers, um, the Stephanie Hans, Ms. Marvel number 31, might be one you want to consider. Um, you know, by by you know, by comparison, it's it, it's ridiculously cheap relative to the book we just saw. Nine eights go for just over a hundred bucks, raws go for fifteen to twenty. Um, and I would argue that maybe it's a more attractive cover, maybe. Um, this book gets a little convoluted because I believe Unknown Comics did a virgin variant of this, which I think you know suppress the value of this of this one but uh but another beautiful miss marvel cover and, and one that I, I i truly think is a modern bubblegum classic now, you know, does the really virgin cover does too. that have miss marvel on it or is it just the bubble <laughs> yeah, miss marvel is gone um okay. it, it's, it, it's just her i don't think the, the marvel 31's on there or the right. barcode i think it's just her okay nice cool. If, if the first book had a, had a sister, this would be that book. And it's almost like the older version of the first cover you showed. Like she's mm -hmm. about 14 or 15, and this is Kamala Khan, age 19, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're both. I mean, if you're going to have them, have them both together, you know? I mean, they're pretty, I, pretty awesome books. I, I personally think this is one of Stephanie's and she's so good but i think yeah. this is one of her best marvel covers and um i think you're right ben i think that virgin did take away and to be honest with you i think i'd rather have the trade i think it looks so cool the way that miss marvel is right there the color and then you know we're so like attracted to the bubble gum the hair and all that that we don't even notice the stretching down here yeah yeah so, yeah it's real, really good cover very undervalued it's got upside too yeah, for 15 bucks, I'd be grabbing these every time you see them. Every single time you see them. All right. Uh, next, we have Young Avengers, number two, volume two. Um, whew, I, I love this book. <laughs> it's another Stephanie Hans. This is a one in 50. Um, we have America Chavez blowing the bubble on this particular cover. I think this book could be important for a number of reasons. One, A, it's a bubblegum cover, so obviously <laughs> there's going to be demand. Um, but, you know, this iteration of Young Avengers may be closer to what we see in the MCU than what we see on the cover of Young Avengers 1, Volume 1. We've got Kate Bishop here. We've got America Chavez here. We've got Young Loki here. So, um, you know, this book, you know, goes... We're a pretty fair price by modern standards, right? At three fifty and nine point eight, we saw the sell for in February. You know, just under two hundred dollars raw. You know, for those prices, for me, this seems like a reasonable bet. Um, but uh, but one of the better modern bubblegum covers that I can think of. Yeah, I didn't realize Stephanie Hans did so many uh, bubblegum covers. She's got a thing for bubblegum, I guess. She's trying to compete with me. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Outlawed number one. Anybody who knows me knows that I love this book. I really love this book. Um, this is on a rud, uh, one in 50. Uh, this book has recently sold for just over a thousand dollars. I think its peak is closer to 2,500. Uh, Raws go for a healthy 350. Ruri blowing the bubble in this and her vibe in this is everything to me. Like this cover is all about Riri and the bubble that she's blowing. I don't know what it is, but I'm completely drawn to it. This book was really under ordered because it came right on the front end of COVID. And uh, there's something about this that, that I absolutely love. I'm super happy to have it in my collection. You know, a bubblegum cover that that's a little bit hard to come by. Yeah. This, I'd like to this see cover. more covers by Anna Rudd. Um, I don't think I've seen uh, anything else by her, but uh, this is a nice cover. Wonder yeah, what I else you could do. I saw this on the shelf, and I didn't think anything of it until I heard um, My Mighty Mel V talking shit about it or something. <laughs> and then, and then, um, and then actually, I went back and I got the variants. And then I was just gonna, I was actually gonna flip them, and then I decided to read them. 
And then I was like, wow, this is actually some really, really good stuff. And then I went down a rabbit hole and then the rest is history. I bought everything <laughs> <laughs> from this point on. <laughs> Didn't they call this the, the COVID variant? Yeah. Didn't it have that kind of uh, nickname? Yeah. yeah. I wasn't even reading this at the time. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to get this. It's, uh, you know, we're in a pandemic or we're still in a pandemic. And then, um, yeah, it was really great. It's like one of my favorite stories actually from 2020 or is it, or yeah, 2020, right? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll lot honestly is for me, one of the better sort of um, crossovers Marvel's done in a while. It was really understated, but it tied Kamala, Riri, Miles, like their books yeah. together really well. Um Really, really, really enjoyed it. And if you hear, if you hear the Mighty Mel V ever talk trash on a book that's coming or or a spec or whatever, you gotta buy it. You gotta well, buy it. He's talking about it. You gotta buy it. <laughs> you know, he talked trash until he sold it for fifteen hundred bucks, and now he he loves it. So you know, it depends on which episode you talk, and he'll admit <laughs> that. He will admit that. I was well, talking shit about yeah. about about champions and outlaws, and look at me now. I'm like their number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just no. think the shot is just genius. It's like, yeah. it's like they're they're not even ready for a photo. They're like giving that attitude, like, "Oh, you want to yeah. take a photo of us? All right, yeah, here you go. Look, throw you some attitude." I just, I just love it, man. Yeah, and it's and pretty, it's pretty, about himself too. So. And it's pretty cool because Miles, you know, because he's 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 a he's a mixed breed, you know, and he actually looks mixed in this one too. He looks Puerto Rican and black. So Yeah, no, it, I don't it, know. It doesn't I mean that's those are that's what my eyes see. So I think it's a special cover, and yeah. I think Phil's exactly right. Like, what why are you guys taking our fucking picture right now? <laughs> 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 It looks like my two sons when my wife tries to take a picture of them. <laughs> All right. All new ultimates. Number one. Um, this is a Marquez one in 25. Um, this looks actually kind of tricky to come by, to be honest with you. The bubbles a little bit, um, um, you know, a little bit hidden, if you will, but, um, you know, one that I was uh, hunting a little while back and uh, I thought was really cool. So I um, just thought we'd throw it on the list here. Never seen this cover before, Ben. Thank you. You're no, so, I mean, was it you? It, grab it because it's not easy. It's not an easy one. Yeah, I was. Uh, when I looked nice. at it, I was like, why is it so expensive? <laughs> <laughs> is it because of you, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Generation X number 28. I've looked for a long time, and I'm going to say, until somebody in the comments proves me wrong, which I'm more than happy to have happen, that this is Jubilee's first cover blowing a bubble. I went through the X-Men titles. I didn't see it. This is I, where I think she first blows bubbles. Now, that said... There was an issue before this where she's blowing bubbles, but like blowing bubble liquid bubbles, like out of like a, you know, when you're a kid and you and you not bubble gum, but like you know you blow them out of with that little stick. So um, a little candy but, before then. Yeah, so that was like <laughs> issue 23, 24, something like that. I can't remember yeah. exactly, um, but um, I, I thought it was important if we're going to talk about bubble gum covers, we talk about Jubilee's first cover blowing a bubble, and I believe this is it. Yeah, I think so too. Please, please prove me wrong in the comments. Please. I looked everywhere, Ben. I couldn't <laughs> find anything else. I, I was looking for hours. <laughs> and I was like, is this the one? <laughs> I'm like, okay. Keep an eye for the newsstand copies, too. Yeah, I mean, the newsstand Jubilee bubble. I mean, come on. That's going to be go to the moon. <laughs> that's money in the bank. All right. Um, X Men number X Men ninety two number one. This is a one in twenty five. Mel likes to call this the um, the Epstein variant. Um, <laughs> um, uh, you know this th this book is really tough to come by. And it's actually selling. Um, and you know what? What I just realized, I screwed up the number. This is number three, so I apologize. This is number one in the blue there, but this is actually number three. Um, this book is really tricky to come by. 
it, it sells currently for a pretty decent price in the sort of the 50 to 75 range, let's say, but a beautiful cover. And, uh, and the only reason I have this book is because Nico was gracious enough to send it to me. And uh, Nico, if you're watching, man, thank you very much. Is that is that uh, Gambit and Jubilee on there? Is that yeah, it's Gambit and Jubilee. He's uh, sticking his finger in her bubble. <laughs> if there's a metaphor behind that, I'm not really getting behind it. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I ain't saying anything with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is X Men ninety two number one. Um. I'm sure anybody watching the show is wondering, you know, are there any hip hop bubblegum covers that I could potentially invest in? I was just thinking that. And uh, and I will say this, X-Men 92 had more bubblegum covers than any series I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, half the covers in the series had Jubilee blowing the bubble. And I'm not exaggerating. It is crazy. But th this cover is really beautiful, I think. And if you collect this kind of stuff, which I really don't think anybody does other than me, um, you know, this is something that you might want to keep an eye out for. I, I think this cover is awesome. It's a throwback to the 90s X-Men. I think that's going to be an important time period for, for X-Men in the MCU. I have a feeling that's where they're going to go, potentially. And uh, and this cover um, is pretty stunning. Yeah, this is Souls of Mischief, right? It has, I mean... Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. great art, man. Yeah, look I mean, at that. Look at Storm. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. What's this? Another hip hop bubblegum cover? Wow. Well, you, you can't be. There can't be more than one. No. This is Generation X. Jubilee again blowing a bubble. We talked about this, right? She's the queen of bubblegum covers, right? And uh, uh, just felt worth throwing this out there that if you collect hip hop bubblegum covers, there's more than one for you to chase. And uh, here, here's another one. So, you know, a cool cover in its own right. Uh, Generation X is always a, a property that I, I really liked from Marvel. And, um, yeah, just, just a book we decided to drop on the list. I'm trying to think back. Does she blow a bubble in the X-Men Adventures cartoon? Does anyone remember? In the know. cartoon itself? Yeah. Does oh, she? man, that's a big ask. Okay. Yeah. I would say... Watch. Probably, but I, I don't remember. It's a, I'm going to have to go back and watch it now, man. Yeah, so if, if someone in the comments says... If there is, know. we got to get Ben an animation cell of that for his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. I like bubblegum covers, and I like Gwenpool. Um, and this is the only Gwen, Gwenpool cover I am aware of where she's blowing a bubble. This book is hard as hell to get come by. So if, if you like to hunt rare books just because they're fun, this is one you might want to look for. Um, this is a 1 in 25. There she is in the corner, casually blowing a bubble. And uh, I don't know. I, I think it's super cool, but, uh, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't have this in our show. So, um, you know, I'll just leave it at that. But I love the character and I love the concept. I love when they um, when she's on a cover and they make her real small and then everything else is going on. It's it's awesome. And plus now she's got a bubble too. That's even better. <laughs> 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 they are they're all just racing to pop it. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they have all is the it, little swords. Yeah. Is there a big bubble behind? Is that the bubble behind her? Behind them all? <laughs> is it a double bubble cover? <laughs> it's a bubble bubble cover. Double bubble. <laughs> There we go. All right. Uh, next, we've got Ultimate X number Ooh. one. This is an oversized <laughs> modern bubble bubblegum cover. So nice. you see the character in the back there, and she's blowing a really large bubble, right? Like, that, that, that's difficult to blow a bubble that size. Um, but, um, you know, this is not something that we could pass up in this segment. So I thought I'd point it out. I will point out that there is a foil version of this cover. So if you really want to chase high-end bubblegum covers, um, that's the one you want to be chasing. So um, this is an oversized modern bubble, 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 bubble. I'm bubble. glad we're not live so I can, I can be a shark and just 
get on eBay right now and get it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sick ass cover. Man. Is this a Neil <laughs> Adams or Art Adams cover? Oh, that's a good question. It's, it's, I'm um, pretty. I'm 99 sure it's Art Adams. Art Adams. Nice. Yeah. I like it. I never seen it work for Art Adams. Yeah, when we say we're going down the rabbit hole, man, like this segment, we're going to go down the fucking rabbit hole because we're going <laughs> to give you stuff that you'd never thought. <laughs> Steve, I, you blowing bubbles back there are killing me. <laughs> you haven't noticed? <laughs> You're just noticing now. Okay. No, I saw you chewing. I didn't see the bubbles before, but I absolutely. <laughs> well, I didn't realize there was a bubble go or bubble on this. Yeah, me, uh, me either. Yeah, until, and, I, until you pointed it out, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I, I have the normal cover and the foil already. So yes, I'm ahead of the game. I mean, <laughs> this, this was hot at one time. Remember when uh, Jimmy Hudson was in the six one six and or I'm I'm aging myself. This was like five years ago. I mean, this book was really hot. It was super hot. Book, yeah. yeah. But they didn't realize it was because of the bubble gum until now. So right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> Another spec level. never dies; it just rests. <laughs> All right. Next, we've got New Warrior Seventeen. This is classic '90s oh, bubble gum cover, right? You guys probably have this book and don't even know it, right? Nova blowing a big old bubble there. Um, honestly, this was my one of my favorite titles when I was a kid in high school. I absolutely loved it. And, uh, you know, I didn't realize there was a bubble on this until maybe two years ago. So uh, something I thought was just worth putting on the list. This is also a rare uh, male bubble blowing cover, right? I mean, up until now, we've only seen females. Am I, am I wrong? No, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I think that's very astute, Steve, that you picked up on that. <laughs> yes, that's right. the first male bubblegum cover that we have on the list. Could, is, it, uh, could it be the, the first? Is the thing is smoking a cigarette? <laughs> He's ripping a dart. Yes, he is. <laughs> oh, I think it's a cigar. A cigar? He's nice. a cigar guy, yeah. Oh. How can you talk while you're blowing a bubble? Just <laughs> He's really good at it. He's really good at it. I mean, it's out of the side of his cheek. <laughs> that could you be know, one of his superpowers. We don't know. I have yeah. to say I think it's interesting that um in Avengers Infinity War, when uh, when I think uh, it was the Reality Stone, was it the Reality Stone that Thanos was uh, trying to get and Gamora was trying to get um, Peter Quill to kill her and he was going to shoot her and it shot out a bunch of bubbles? Ah, yeah, shot a bunch of bubbles. Yeah, good. I think we're onto something with these bubbles. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Team Titans 20. This is the cover B, first appearance of Crush. Uh, this is her blowing a bubble. If you watch the Spec 10 list, you might see this book on there. Maybe not in the 10, but, you know, maybe in the 11 to 15 range, potentially. So uh, this book is dirt cheap and uh, super cool, and I, I, I think it's worth grabbing. And DC's doing a lot with Crush right now. They're definitely looks like that they have plans for her. I I wouldn't go as far as say like TV movie, but I'm saying that she, she's front and center in, in in comics. And you know the I think with this book the problem because I I'm surprised that this book is still so low in price. Um, that one in twenty five was just you know so good and it's just. Whoosh, took off that everybody kind of gravitated towards that book so you know what i can't find that book anywhere that one in 25 i i pick up uh this uh, variant and i think this variant definitely has legs long term so keeping with this, this is a uh, brand new bubblegum cover this hasn't even come out yet uh but this is to sort of support the idea that these covers aren't going away uh so this is from robin number two that's flatline there uh, leaning up against the uh, the tombstone, blowing a bubble, a small bubble, you know, by by the standards of the show, but a bubble nonetheless. And uh, uh, I, I felt you know just worth putting this in here because you know they keep coming these bubblegum covers. Has Flatline been on any other covers to this point? Because uh, she, she was on the uh, one twenty five in the back of one B, I believe. But this is her. Um, sort of first mainstream cover, if you will. 
So it's her first cover, and it's a bubblegum cover. We're going to cause stores to institute the one copy per customer. <laughs> yes, I would say that's absolutely going to play itself out. No Great. question. Great. <laughs> nice. All right. Next, we've got Harley Quinn number 52. I call this the rarish Harley bubblegum cover because you would assume she'd have a lot of them. But I had a hard time finding them, to be perfectly honest with you, right? Mama. Mama. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know. Yeah, I remember I think, when you put the challenge out there, Ben. You are like, I don't think one exists. And I I, I, I felt like uh, Samson, like, going through all the covers trying to find it. And I finally got found this one. I found a store yeah. variant, but I didn't want to put it in there. Oh, there is some yeah. store variants, or, but yeah. she doesn't have as many as you would yeah. think, given the character, yeah. right? You, you think yeah. they'd be everywhere, but... Uh, yeah. I think it's more of a Margot Robbie thing. Right. No, I think you're right. I think you're right, Steve. Uh, I think this cover is really cool. Um, I've got it. It's a foil cover, actually, for anybody out there who who's hunting it. Uh, so it's really sharp. But yeah, uh, Harley doesn't have as many bubblegum covers as you'd think. Jubilee clearly has her beaten comfortably. <laughs> Another example of Marvel beating DC. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here's DC um, with a relatively recent bubblegum cover. This is a variant DC, Dead Planet number six. I remember when this was solicited, I'm like, I've got to have this. <laughs> um, I like this, frankly, a lot better than the Shazam version. We could have had another guy blowing a bubble on this, on this list, but I, I figured I'd just put this in its place. And... Uh, I think this is this is a super cool cover. Um, uh, it's badass. It's story, go, go out and read it. No, I mean it's got a glossy cover. I mean, so the picture doesn't really do the book justice. I mean, it, it it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I don't know who put this on the list. I don't have this. It's not a rare book, but I fucking need this book. It's so good. Um, this is Buffy the Vampire Slayer number two cover A bubblegum cover i love this i absolutely love it somebody in the chat dropped this saying add this and like yes absolutely i think this is perfect this is wonderful um really really cool i'll have to ask frank Google if he has an extra copy for you <laughs> uh jupiter's, jupiter's legacy is getting some buzz right now it has nothing to do with that i i really love the vibe of this cover and you know sort of the other sub 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 genre that I collect are characters listening to music. So I've got bubblegum and this on mu music on one cover. Um, so this is an important book in my PC. Um, but I love just the energy and the vibe of this particular cover. It's wonderful. Um, I think it's super cool. If you if you haven't seen Jupiter's Legacy. Um, that nails it, it, right? It, 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 yeah, I mean that is Chloe front and center. I mean, right? she's, she's she's the bad girl, and there you go. So, and if you haven't seen it, go see it. It's it's good. I yeah, mean, if you, if you're the actress, I mean that's the template. That's that's what you've got to embody right there. You know, absolutely. Yeah, thank you to Rich for turning me on to the series. I I just finished it. I'm like, I'm bummed that they only did eight episodes, and yeah, it was good. This yeah, is. I've got to get to it. I, I've been itching to. I've just, I've been getting killed at work, but yeah, I've got to. I've got to go watch it. But um, hey, Rich, no spoilers. But is there any bubble gum in the episodes? Do you remember? <laughs> um, I, that you know would be what? A I didn't. Spoiler, I, though. You know, I, she I should, she I may have. I I you know. She's she's putting no, everything she, else in her system. So yeah, I yeah. <laughs> she's just, she's just drinking. <laughs> This, yeah, is she's... Good, this is a good cover for, for Sharon Stone collectors as well. If, <laughs> if you're old enough to get that reference. <laughs> uh, Sharon Stone claims like she came out in her memoirs or whatever that came out this year or early last year or whatever that she claims that uh, she didn't know that that scene even took place until she saw She was probably high as shit too. <laughs> <laughs> she says she she said uh she goes uh yeah i thought it was strange when the director told me to make sure my underwear was off <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so okay 
<laughs> all right. Um, all right. Something is killing the children. Number 12, cover A. You know, listen, when I saw this book come out, right, this tells me that, you know, bubblegum covers are are a thing. Like, this is just uh, a dude, right, blowing a bubble, right, in a morgue, like we all do. And uh, <laughs> I uh, don't appreciate that. I mean, it looks like they swipe my cover. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is it Nico uh, an attorney? You might uh, you might seek some uh, legal counsel around that. Uh, you know, there, Steve. You know, yeah, I think we might pursue that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, like a modern book just with uh, with a bubble showing up. So um, you know, people like to give me a hard time that these bo- the, the, these covers aren't a thing, but every day I see more and more evidence that you know maybe they are. So let's keep going. All right, uh, Punk Mambo number five, right? So this is another modern bubblegum cover. Um, issue number five um, of a Valiant title that, uh, you know, didn't necessarily have the biggest buzz in the world, but um, but here we go. We got the, the main character on the cover blowing a, a fairly uh, healthy-sized bubble. Not Ultimate X size, but, you know, you know pretty healthy nonetheless. Man, this looks like an ex-girlfriend from like eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Very attractive. You you have good taste. <laughs> you know you know I love the concept of this series. I, I wish Valiant had their you know had their their uh, their hat on straight and could 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 put out some things beyond that one Bloodshot movie we got. But uh, you never know, Punk Mambo. Just... She was a cool character. She was a decent character, uh, but. Uh... Uh, you know, blowing bubbles nonetheless. So, next we've got all right. So, this is an interesting conversation we're going to have right now. This is Bubble Gun number two. This was a one in 30 J. Scott Campbell variant. Um, there were as anything, as far as I can tell, less than 6,000 copies ordered of this book, making this book actually pretty damn rare. Right, I'd, I've never been able to find it. Um, make this book pretty damn rare. Yes, it, it, it is tough. Um, now you've got obviously the Campbell collectors who would be interested in this book, but also the bubblegum collectors, right? So when you put those two huge subset of comic collectors together, you know this book becomes tough to come by. Um, uh, but I think it's really cool. I'm not always the biggest Campbell fan, but this one I really like, um, you know, and, and I'm not biased by the bubble at all. Um, I, I, I do like this one. Um, but I think what's interesting, what we should talk to, because while this book is is super rare, don't be confused by the next book on this list. Okay. This is Bubblegum bubble gun number one from 2017. So effectively what they did, and this is – kind of confusing and when i was doing research on these books is they took what is effectively a sketch and it wasn't really a sketch it was lightly colored and repurposed the art for number one um as as a c cover um so 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 this one is actually the later printing of it and some might argue it's the better printing because the colors pretty pop pretty well um but if you're hunting from a from a, from a scarcity perspective number two of the 2013 run is the much tougher book. This one, they repurposed that art because it was so cool to make it more widely available. That said, this book isn't exactly easy to come by in its own right, but but a really cool bubblegum cover as well. It's hard to believe this is Aspen, right? It's hard to believe Aspen would do something like this. It, it's shocking. I mean, they, they keep <laughs> producing Michael Turner covers. And <laughs> poor, <laughs> poor fellow. He's... He's met. Produ- I, I think, I think Michael graves. Turner was so ahead of his time. He was drawing characters that uh, didn't exist even prior to it, even you know to his passing. He was that yeah. he was that far ahead of the game. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think these covers are fun. Aspen, you know, they're uh, they are who they are, as Steve pointed out. But um, I think there's a department Department of Truth issue coming out about Aspen. <laughs> <laughs> Probably about their time machine or something, right? Yep. Hmm. Um, all right. I just had to drop this cover on here. 
I love this cover. I don't suggest anybody go buy it because it's a uh, it's a store exclusive from, um, you know, my least favorite store exclusive producer out there, Frankie's Comics. Fuck you, Frankie's. Um, <laughs> that said, the cover is just wonderful. I love Ji Hung Lee. There's something about this that's awesome, and I just couldn't leave it off the list. But so it is a store exclusive. And if Mel can refer to a cover as an Epstein cover, then I get to refer to this again as the Urkel cover. <laughs> yes. High waisted. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just I love this. I, I love this cover, and you know, I would say this. I, what I would point out about this cover and why I think it's so interesting is is that. You know, when when you when you buy store exclusives, there is sort of the trade dress and the virgin. Generally, the bubble gum in this one was the the tougher book to get, the shorter printed book. Wow. Um, the I actually I've got a copy here. If any, hold on. This was the trade dress version. Um, oh, nice. With Batman, she wasn't blowing the bubble. Right. But the bubble nice. was the was the tougher book to get. I had no idea. Wow, I'm gonna. I'm definitely going that. Thank you, Ben, for great um, info. So you know, I, 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 that. Uh, I, I like how Miracle Molly is in neon in the background, and then again, in case she forgets who she is, it's on her waistband. I mean, <laughs> it's genius. I do the same thing with my clothes. I mean. <laughs> I almost think that the, that the artist is doing an iteration of of glow. Remember glow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. Ladies of wrestling because yeah. you got that Vegas style Miracle Molly in the back, and then you got that out that wrestler's outfit with the you know persona personality mm -hmm. of of Miracle Molly. So yeah, it's dope. Yeah, I think the neon in the back really works in this book. To be honest with you, it really yeah, pops. It does. Totally agree. Totally agree. All right, next we've got, we're going to go to some golden <laughs> age now. Okay, so bubblegum covers aren't a modern phenomenon by any means, right? We've and, and, and somebody challenged me, what's the first bubblegum cover? I couldn't figure it out. So I threw a bunch of golden age on here. Certainly aren't the first ones, my guess. But here we go. We got Richie Rich, the poor little rich boy um, by Harvey Comics, um, blowing a bubble full of money. Um, and uh, who wouldn't love a bubble full of money? I guess Jesus. But, uh, <laughs> uh, this is an old 10 center, so it doesn't fall off of trees, but it does fall out of bubble gum. <laughs> Got it. All yeah, right, it, that's a great cover. So, uh, here's another golden age book Daffy Duck from Gold Key. You know, just another, just, an just another, um, you know. Uh, this book actually, now they look at it, is probably closer to Silver Age, but regardless, an, an old school bubblegum cover. I just love the look on Elmer Fudd's face; like his mind just got blown. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like Can you just take my bubblegum. Like, how <laughs> <Right>. you... <laughs> is that a duck blowing a bubble? <laughs> I've seen it all now. Okay, this is Sparkler number seventy-four. Um, I'm taking no chance of my bubblegum. He says, and he's pumping it up with a pump. Very, very sensible. Your bubble gum. Um, while his friend has it stuck on her face. That said, his two buddies in the background are just happily full of bubbles. Socially distance, I may point out. So, um, um, yeah. Um, not sure what else to say about this one, but uh, definitely an old school bubble gum cover. Ben, ben, do you think Ernie Bushmiller belongs in the same league as like a Matt Baker or Schomburg? Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, this guy was ahead of his time, right? With the bubblegum, yeah. I mean, listen, I, yeah. I, I think history is going to smile on Ernie um, as time goes on because you know this is uh, this is some bubblegum stuff. Maybe before his peers were even thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. It even looks like she's cut out bubble gum from her hair before. Like it's not the first time this happened. <laughs> it's not the first time she's had a face for bubble gum. Yep. I had that same problem. <laughs> All right, Happy Comics. Listen, this is uh, using bubble gum for you know for a good cause, right? He caught a he caught a robber with his bubble gum. So um, you may not see that bubble fill 
um, the page in the nice pink you're used to, but this is an in sort of industrious use of your bubble gum. So um, <laughs> I thought we should add it to the list. <laughs> Good one, Steve. Thank you. Okay, like so you. this is uh, Paul Terry's uh, comics, number 123, uh, a staple in anybody's bubblegum collection. Um, you know, these uh, these ravens uh, down there uh, selling this super atomic bubblegum tricked this poor dog, and uh, he's, he's taken off. And uh, we all have empathized with the situation, um, but uh, uh, a book we're all happy to have in our collection for the bubblegum enthusiasts. Ben, ha have some respect, please. I mean, that's th that. Those aren't just two ravens. That's Echo and Jekyll. Oh, Echo and Jekyll. I'm pretty sure. My bad. I, I think that's yes, Echo and Jekyll. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I think that, aren't they magpies? That's. Magpies, I think yes. you're right, Rich. Very, very, yeah. very good. Yeah. You belong in Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Listen, can you have? <laughs> a conversation about bubble, about bubble gum without Bugs Bunny? I say no. I say no. So this is Yosemite Sam and Bugs Bunny. I, I couldn't really pin down what the issue number on this was, but um, uh, but a cover that uh, was too good to pass up. Too good to pass up. Yeah, I love these gold key covers, but this one is extra cool. All right. Wow. Little arch number sixty-five. Some uh, silver tri age trifecta. Oh. Uh, we got three bubbles going going on here. You know they're they're jamming comfortably on stage, and uh, and blowing bubbles like it's nobody's business. So um, a good twenty five center, and uh, this one has the uh, the date stamp on it, March thirteenth. So um, very you know, cool, very cool stuff. Starting a new genre of music too, bubble gum rock, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to go. That that's a date that'll go down in bubblegum history. <laughs> <laughs> so true, Steve. Right. Listen, there were a lot of books that that missed this list. Um, you know, please drop your favorite bubblegum covers in the comments. We'd love to hear about them. Um, but I'd say this about niche comic collecting, and uh, you know, we obviously had a lot of fun with this, but. When you collect things that aren't exactly mainstream, when you're digging in those boxes and you're looking for those keys and you come across something that that just sort of interests you, it makes the hobby even a, a little bit more fun, right? You're digging in the dollar bins. Oh, here's a bubblegum cover. I'm going to grab that. Um, so all joking aside, I do love these kinds of covers. You don't have to spend a lot of money on them. Um, and, and for me, it just makes, it makes the hobby a lot more fun. So anyways, thanks for tuning in. And, uh, you know, please check in. We're going to do more of these down the rabbit hole segments in the future, just focusing on topics that are a little bit out there um, that, that we all happen to like. So, so thank you very much. Very fun. Good time. Great time.